Welcome to the Game OST Podcast, a postmortem for video game music examining its influence over the gamers and the sagas the music helped create. Let's get to our hosts, Andrew and Daniel. What are you looking at? <laughs> I'm looking at the track list. Oh, okay. You're so on task. That's helpful. Okay. Welcome to the Game OST podcast. <laughs> it's not funny. Why are we both laughing? I'm laughing because you're laughing. Oh, well, I was laughing because I don't. It's just funny. Uh, okay, so we are the Game OST podcast. I'm Andrew. I'm Daniel. And the purpose of this show is to examine video game culture and specifically the music and how it has influenced uh society at large sometimes <laughs> sometimes what do you mean no i just mean like sometimes we go into that <laughs> right 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 we we more geek out about the the music in general that's true but like well i don't know it's, it's like to some extent it's not like <laughs> i don't know what i'm trying to say some I, my point is is that uh we're looking at games that are definitely influential. Like Chrono Trigger, I think is is influential. It, it's like, or it was, it is, it shall be. I, I mean, I I think that it's still very relevant. Yeah. Especially if you talk about retro games. Right. So. Right. Well, and the other thing is like retro games is a whole industry now too. It's funny because when we were growing up, they weren't retro; they were just games. <laughs> when when we were growing up. We got bullied for liking video games, so oh, nowadays I, I it, seem, it, it seems <laughs> story to be, time. Well, still, <laughs> I'm just saying it, it seems to be more of like a like video games as a whole are like way more acceptable. And yeah. if you go, oh yeah, I like uh, the Super Nintendo, people are like, oh that's so cool. I I love old video games. You know, everybody's yeah. like that now. So. Yeah, it's a little frustrating. Yeah, it's no like lie. it's like wow. I, I guess I'm not special anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> But it's uh, it's just interesting how there's so many games that were really good on like the 64 and Super Nintendo that got ported to the DS and mm, the mm-hmm. virtual console to mm-hmm. I mean I, well I guess PlayStation has done a similar thing. Yeah, I, re- I really didn't even think about that because play- Oh yeah, we should talk about backwards compatibility. Yeah, no, no. Why not? Why not? not? Why not? Cuz backwards compatibility wasn't really a thing before. I know, so, but but uh, wasn't Sony the one who introduced it? Because when the PS2 came out, that was the first. I think you're almost right. Oh, uh? because the Game Boy Advance. Oh, I think introduced it. I don't remember which came first though. Okay, because the Game Boy Advance could play Game Boy games as well. I don't remember when the Game Boy. You have a phone. <laughs> I do. I do have a phone. <laughs> All yeah. Right. Anyway, <laughs> regardless, PS2 Game Boy Advance kind of started that whole like backwards compatibility thing. Yeah. The Game Boy Advance for handhelds and the PS2 for consoles. And now, if something doesn't have backwards compatibility, everyone goes insane. That's true. So I try to just remember that Super Nintendo didn't have backwards compatibility, so why should the new consoles? But that would have been crazy if it had because, well, I guess it wouldn't have been that crazy. It's just no one had that idea back then. Right, right. Because they were like, oh, new technology, you want to go forward, not not backwards. You can not only play Super Mario, but you can play... Mario Bros. and Pong. <laughs> so many games you can play. Oh, so many, yeah. yes. So, Daniel, tell us a little bit about yourselves for those who don't know. So, for those who don't know, Daniel does not like mainstream culture for the most part. I, well, we, we won't get into that. It, it, that's well, another podcast well, uh, for another time. Well, yeah, but I just, that, I, I don't know. I feel like it, <laughs> it influences I'm, you as a person. It, it influences me, especially in, like, what I listen to. and right. Well, I, not not even really. I've just always listened to video game music, and that's kind of my, like, if you get in my car, you're going to hear video game music right. on the radio. Right? Whereas if you get in my car, you'll hear weird Icelandic and German bands and, like... And sometimes video game music. Some Well, more frequently or now. Sh- well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little bit about myself. Let's see. Ask me a question. Um, I, I, did we talk about how you got into music? Uh, kind of, but it's not really. Because you said you said an you an interesting story. I remember you saying you really didn't get into music until like after high school, almost. right? And I had a very strange aversion to it because I also despised the mainstream and what was happening. Mm-hmm. Like, oh man, I remember when In Sync was out. Everyone was like crazy about them. Like, I was friends with an entire family who was obsessed with In Sync. How does that happen? I, I like usually it's like the parents are like, oh, whatever. My kids like this shitty music. 
But no, the parents liked it even more than the children did. Yeah, that is a little scary. It was really, and I just, I couldn't stand it. And then they played like the radio every day when we drove to school and I wanted to blow my brains out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would go home and play like Final Fantasy 8 or 9 or whatever was out at the time and just be like, yeah, this is it. It's, it's weird. I didn't even realize how much I liked game music until I listened to it apart from video games. Right. I feel like that was something that w- when I was a kid, like... I I guess I did kind of know how much I liked video game music apart from yeah. everything else because my parents and stuff like they listened to like Christian radio nonstop and um I'm not really a fan of like contemporary Christian music uh not because it's Christian What do you but, mean you're not a fan? Oh. We listen to it all the time at Chick-fil-A. Right, well that's true. I like <laughs> instrumental. That is that is cool. Uh but no, I I got I guess I got kind of tired of it because it was always the same thing over and over again like yeah. Literally, literally the same songs like every day, you know, that Mm. kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, eventually, like I started listening to my Game Boy on rides, like whenever we would go to places. So I would I would like pick. Oh, like Wario World? (laughs) Well, like like Wario Land or like Super Mario Land 2 or Battletoads or like, you know, anything like that. Uh, Okay. So you had quite a collection. I had a lot of Game Boy games. The only Game Boy game I ever had was Pokemon related. It was red. No, it wasn't even red. It was blue, silver. And the trading card game. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I only ever had one Pokemon Game Boy game, and it was uh, gold. Gold. But I didn't really ever listen to that one. I didn't really like the music from it. <laughs> All right. So our, what is our topic for today? Our topic for today is Donkey Kong Country. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> yeah. As, so, you, as you may have been able to tell from all the drops I'm going to put in later. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, speaking of. Donkey Kong Country uh, has a very specific, I don't know if I said this last week, aesthetic. I, I hate saying that sometimes. Why? But because it's some, become so bougie? Maybe. It, may be. it, 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 it sounds like it sounds like too, yeah, bougie, I guess. You're not wrong. Um, but, but Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3, um, even by themselves, have very specific aesthetics. And mm. I think with the remakes today, um, like Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze and stuff oh, like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was worried um, about that. Those ones are, like, completely different in terms of the way they feel. Um, the way they play is similar. Why, though? Um, because the the artwork, the music, everything just does not... The, oh, even the enemies and stuff. It's not It's not the Kremlings anymore. It's uh, these weird, like, tiki monster things. <laughs> that sounds cool. Yeah, it's cool if you like new Donkey Kong. Do you think it could also be because uh, Wise is working alone on it? I... I don't know if he worked alone. He did Tropical Freeze. He didn't do Donkey Kong Country Returns. I'm sorry. I meant to say his name correctly. Vise? We love you, David Wise. Come on the show. Um, that would be really cool. Actually. Oh, my God. No, it's it, he's not dead. Not yet. Well, you're right. That will be cool when he comes on the show. Yeah, there you go. That's the idea. <laughs> That's the attitude. Um, uh, he uh, did do <laughs> the first soundtrack entirely by himself, I believe. Uh, um. I think two and three is when he had help from oh, yeah, yeah, Evelyn yeah. Fisher I and think is her name. Rebecca or Rachel. I can't remember the names. I just know I saw two other names. Uh, but yeah, he is amazing. Mm-hmm. He, he's I, a very good uh, Super Nintendo like ambient artist. I can't figure out why he never was like, you know what? Video game music is cool and all, but I could also just produce my own stuff and put it. Uh, well, maybe maybe he was <laughs> busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, m- maybe. I mean, I I don't know. Maybe he, I don't think he has any solo stuff. But if he mm-hmm. did, I would sure be interested, especially if it sounds anything like Donkey Kong Country. Uh, yeah, for sure. Or Killer Instinct, for that matter. We have very specific likes in terms of our mm-hmm. mus- uh, video game music taste. So, yeah. like, I may like a soundtrack more than you do. So yeah. I was like, let's do Donkey Kong Country because you did Chrono Trigger, and I'm not as familiar with it. So. But that's not the first thing he did. What was the first thing he did? It says Slalom for the NES, uh, as well as Wizards and Warriors. Well, I'm sure that he did. But uh, yeah, he was, so he was just kind of Rare's in-house guy for a, a while, right? Yeah, I don't know if he, it was him by himself or not. I th- I'm pretty sure it was, but... I can't see Yeah, he, he is on a very large number of Rare titles back in the day. Yeah, quite a lot, including Killer Instinct. I cannot believe I forgot that. We, oh, could we talk about Killer Instinct a little bit later? In, the, in this episode? I, I mean, I guess it's kind of related just because it's the same composer. Yeah. Well, I, well so. we'll see. All right. So should we should we get into the nitty gritty? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay, here we go. Just 
just the just okay. What are your feelings and thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that is extremely nostalgic. Mm. Um, the the rare logo lighting up in the their famous like. It, what is it? It's like a 3D rendering type thing. Oh, yeah, 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 with the little lasers and stuff. It, yeah. Oh, man, I remember when that happened in Killer Instinct. I, I don't think that happened in the Super Nintendo Killer Instinct, but in the N64 one, I was like, oh, dude, they, like, figured out all the polygons. <laughs> Every polygon's there. <laughs> um, yeah, that that opening logo, like, that opening theme or whatever, uh, before the even the main title plays is kind of iconic just because mm-hmm. it's, like, anyone who's played Donkey Kong Country as a kid... Like if they hear that, even if they don't know right away what it is, they're they're like, oh my god, that's that's like my childhood, right? Yeah. So that that's kind of like the impact that has had. Okay, I'm gonna play something. Oh, of course, I, there's an ad. So let's just talk about ads for a second. <laughs> We'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Fake Coffee. We're making real coffee every day. And <laughs> there might actually be a place called Fake Coffee, so you might have just given them a lot of oh yeah, love. Let's get right in there. touch with Fake Coffee <laughs> while we ponder cool ambient jungle beats. Oh, the level select This theme? is really weird to me. The l- it makes you think about Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the reverb on the piano. It's like, or... I don't know. I can't... I can't... What? Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's interesting that this is the only level select song because when you're no, in, that's not true oh is it i think i think it is you're right no yeah you're right whenever you're in like the the fear factory levels mm-hmm. or and, the like, snow place or the snow place and this is playing and it's, it's like just happy because you know you need that refresher when you get to those dark places i mean i guess that is true because when i was in the snow place like that is super like the music is just super dark yeah. that fear factory and even the i forgot the place after that or before it the see when we say postmortem, we mean mortem because <laughs> there's some dark video game music out there. <laughs> there. There really is, and I mean, you wouldn't think so in some of these kids' games, but Not, I mean, I well, guess you could call them kids' games. But eh, Donkey Kong Country is definitely lighthearted for the most part. Yeah, I mean, nowadays it definitely feels that way. It's not as well nowadays. There's no content. Well, not no content. The, the content has been drastically taken aback because game scores are now basically movie scores. Yeah, and that's kind of a shame. You just had to play this one, didn't you? Of course. See, I I don't like this theme. Why not? This is great! I, this is a great I, introduction. I, this, this is one of Donkey the, Kong comes busting out of the mountaintop and landing. He's it, just a big ape. It sound, this song is the <laughs> one of the only songs in the game that actually sounds like monkeys, right? Yeah. Uh, or, or like jungle beats, you know. Yeah. Everything else is like totally weird in comparison. But what I do like about this song is that synth that plays in the background it has that. Da, da. Yeah, yeah, that is sick. Like I love that. The beats are amazing. But I, I'm and just... you can still hear the ambient little like uh, birds and stuff right now. No, you can't. Okay. It's I, I'm just not really a fan of the of the overall melody and tone of the song and da, stuff da, like da, that because i like aquatic ambience and some okay. of the other songs that play later i guess uh, okay what do you like so much about aquatic ambience i think it's i think it's i think it's, I think it's... <laughs> and then it plays <laughs> uh they just fade me out right there delay it <laughs> <laughs> i think it's in the... <laughs> no this song was was one of those songs when I was a kid. It's like, wow, this this is what video game music should be. Mm. Like, it, it just sounded so. Oh man, if we had David Wise here, we could be like, so what part did you play in this? Did you do everything? And then Robin came along and was like, oh no, change the synth or whatever. You know, man, oh. I, I I don't know. I don't know how much Robin Beanland had on this, just because this is a very David Wise track. True. So this like, sounds like Killer Instinct too. It, yeah, it kind of has like the same. I probably even oh, some of the God, same. He's synths. so good at ambience. I am jealous of his talent. The same. It is. Uh, it's like the perfect amount of reverb. <laughs> it's, but Just, it's funny because it's an underwater level. You have to hate all of those, right? You would think so, but the thing about Donkey Kong Country is you don't have to worry about air for some reason. True. Uh, which I'm, I'm not complaining. Dude, you don't know monkeys can breathe underwater indefinitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That that is something that. Even as a kid, I never 
paid attention to that. I never even realized that until later in life. I was like, oh my gosh, you're underwater for like, you know, upwards of five minutes. Okay, we have to talk about this right now because I just had a very sharp memory of um, when you get to the bonus stage, when you're in the water level, mm-hmm. it's like a maze, right? And there's those stars. So yeah, there's a there's an assortment of like bonus stages, but they're all relatively the same in the way that they're created, I guess. Yeah, they didn't get creative until like two or three well three or four (laughs) (laughs) um in with the bonus stages you basically were collecting um this is so disney yeah it kind of is you were collecting this sounds like a robin beanland track yeah um but anyways you were collecting monkeys come on monkeys monkeys you were collecting like miniature versions of the animals that you could ride in the game Mm -hmm. which Um, this is what for this for water stage, it's the swordfish. It's the swordfish, yeah. Ellie? Uh, on guard. On guard, thank yeah. you. Ellie's the frog. I don't I don't remember the frog's name. I, I just can't... remember on guard because no. he was like the a swordfish. Hoppy? Right? I don't know. I just know there's one named Ellie and there's an ostrich and a rhino. And it I might be Ellie the ostrich, actually. I love all animals. <laughs> Okay, but why do why do monkeys or Kongs have superiority over the other races of Earth's races, <laughs> species races. of animals? A little too transparent <laughs> oh <God. laughs> over here. Uh oh. <laughs> and yeah, you know, this is just something you don't really think about whenever you're younger, and I don't really think about it now because I didn't think about it when I was younger. So. Yep. Oh, the boss theme. Do you feel the pressure? encroaching on you this, this yeah it was very stressful i mean the first boss wasn't really so much but <laughs> which one is the giant bird <laughs> that, that is actually you fight him twice um ah. you fight him once in the second world and then you fight him way later in the game as a different color i don't um, know why but he reminds me of uh the game rampage <laughs> I mean, he is a giant bird. Well, so it looks 3D, too. I mean, I think they were 3D models. Were they? I think so. Yeah, I think the... But, again, I could be wrong. Were they real monkeys? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they superimposed real monkeys into the game, just like they did with Mortal Kombat. Oh, dude, what if they had made Mortal Kombat? Oh, gross. <laughs> gross. <laughs> now someone's going to go and make that and get sued, but it'll be amazing. I love this song. Oh, the cave theme? Yeah. Now that is a really cool ambient track. Yeah. Because it's very minimal. It is. And also they have this amazing diffusion on the water drop that I could listen to this on a loop for days. It sounds like it's sounds like it's right in your ear, but it's it's, it's there's also no so there, far away. <laughs> it's so cool cuz it's like a supernatural looking cave. But there's nothing natural about any of the sounds we're right, hearing right now. Right. It's physically impossible in nature <laughs> to hear these sounds. And also the... Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't get to that part the I other just, night. <laughs> I just love... Oh, all these tracks are so good. David Wise, man. Okay, all of them, but the, the one with the monkey beat. I don't hey. like that one. Don't, don't trash talk my monkey beat. <laughs> This is also a very stressful theme. It is, um, but not at first. No, not at first. It seems very normal. I mean, well, not the song, but the stage. Oh, you know what this reminded me of? Um, the very first bike mini game in Final Fantasy VII. Oh, yeah. Because of that that low synth sound, it just it. Uh, you could play them right next to each other, mm-hmm. and it would it, you'd be like, wow. This is really similar. Maybe that's where they took their inspiration from. Honestly, this is better though because it has has more vision. More more vision. I think so. This I, has this 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 tells a story with sound. Yeah, yeah, and that's what's cool about David Wise's early stuff. Um, I don't know about his newer stuff, so I don't really want to comment on that. But um, I just know that the tracks I've heard from Tropical Freeze I don't like. But oh, that's sad. Yeah. When did you? Is it out? Yeah, it's been out for a while. It came out on Wii U. We, we, you. Yeah, I feel like uh, it's kind of sad how <laughs> Donkey Kong, the franchise, has sort of fallen off the wagon in terms of holding my interest. Yeah, I mean, once Rare left um, Nintendo, I think that was kind of my my departure from the Donkey series. Rip Rare. <laughs> Rip Rare, yeah. Rip Door. And now they make uh, party games for Connect on Xbox 360 and <laughs> I like to connect. Things. <laughs> Or maybe Xbox One now. I don't know what they do now. I was gonna fade this one in, but it's so it's so ambient. You don't need to. 
It starts out with nothing. It's just a, it's, it's like a breathy background noise. It's terrifying. Yeah. Is this the one with the, uh, this is the life of the Mayans, right? I don't know. That is extremely creepy. Oh my god, yeah. I, chills just <laughs> shot up my back. It sounds like creepy crawlies. It sounds like a horror movie from the 80s. Definitely. And that is something, like, when you're a kid, you hear this stuff and you're just like, I don't want to play this right now. Yeah. But then that synth comes in. It's a little and it's gentler. Like, and it's like, okay, I can well, do this. Well, the other thing is, <laughs> it's, it is a little different when you're actually playing it. Like, the mineshaft, you're like, you're, you hear the synth and you're like, oh, wow, I'm like moving really fast. Right. And then with this too, you have the uh, the uh, the forward momentum of being able to, you know, run around as okay. Who, uh, team Diddy Kong or Team King? Whoa, <laughs> Team Diddy Kong or Team Donkey <laughs> Kong? What what did I say? Um, I I, I personally prefer Diddy Kong, just because he's faster and he has a hat. And if you go into a stage like this, you kind of want to be him so you can get out as fast as you possibly can. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Does so, he? Does he have the cartwheel in this one or no? Yes, he does. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So that's a series long thing. Yeah. I kind of wish that in Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie's Double Trouble. <laughs> I know the subtitle because I love that game. Oh. Um, I wish that they had let you be more than two characters. You know? Yeah. I could totally picture all four of them just like run- running a lot. I mean, not all four because there has to be some kind of reason to play the game. Mm-hmm. And wasn't Donkey Kong trapped or something? In in two and three, he gets trapped in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, they could have made up a new character like they did in 64, or I just think it would be so cool to see four, like, that's so Chrono Trigger of me, I know. (laughs) I can't help it, it's just a good game. It's a platformer, (laughs) not an RPG. (laughs) Uh, But that would be cool to have, like, four four lives, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Here we go. Oh, man. I think this is the one I was thinking about. We're just knocking them out one by one. Yeah, seriously. If, if I remember correctly, this is the one where... Well, I don't remember if it was this one or the one before, but no, it definitely was not this one. Never I mind. I remember this one is... is a, this is the Glacier. Yeah. Yeah. I like this one a lot, I think, because it has that... Maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. I think I'm thinking of three, actually. The oh. snow stage where it's like... Doo, doo, doo bird theme bird banana theme, theme. <laughs> banana bird theme <laughs> oh yeah 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 well th- uh, this theme is also really dark yeah but not too dark i i it, feel like the the, the well it's not scary dark <laughs> the uh <laughs> melodic content doesn't leave you feeling like you're gonna die <laughs> right <laughs> whereas in the other one it's just like i hear nothing but like breath right and it's like it's like this needs to go away yeah now. <laughs> and so well <laughs> Oh, this is like anytime I ever play through the game, even when I was younger, this track was one that I always looked forward to. It is such a good arpeggiator. You know I, what I, mean? I am. Oh, yeah. I am obsessed with this song. This is <laughs> my favorite. One of my favorite video game songs of all time. Mm. Um, it, it is like it's like a, a victory theme. It's like a progression theme. It's like, you know. You're, you're almost there. You're almost to the end of the game. And, of course, you don't really know that when you're younger. But Isn't... Oh, God. this I hate this level so much because it's not easy. Oh, no. It is... It is. I think it's the biggest difficulty spike, no? I mean, it, mean, no, no. It's it's definitely difficult, especially with, like, you have to time the jumps with the uh, yeah. the oil cans that uh, boost up the fire and stuff. Uh, this, this, uh, this soundtrack... <laughs> this part of the soundtrack got interrupted many times by me with... <laughs> and the the second part was me crying. <laughs> and the first part was me throwing the controller at the screen. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> no, but the music is is kind of worth it. It's, oh yeah, it's, it's maybe that's why they made it so good because they knew it was going to be a really hard stage. Yep. Yeah, I'm. I could listen to this for hours, like for real. <laughs> this would take you hours. <laughs> Hey, let's make a promise to never reveal our inside jokes to people, but we we'll still say them to each other. Okay? Yeah, I'm, I can. I'm okay with that. If yeah. people ever really want to know, they can try to contact us. Somehow. Oh yeah, we should start a Twitter for our show. Well, that would be hit cool. us up on Twitter. Hashtag the Game OST is the best hashtag there is. 
that's hashtag spelled out the second time. The first right, time right. you have to like put the hashtag or else it doesn't work. The game OST at the game OST. <laughs> so it's wait, it's at the game OST and then AT the game OST. <laughs> so I like that. Are you creating it right now? <laughs> the, yes, I, I am. I am on the move right now. It's no, a good thing I'm, this is a live, or that would be taken by now, and then someone would try to ransom it to us, and I'd be like, I have no money. Yeah, I'd be like, do you you do realize this is not uh... <laughs> <laughs> not yet anyway? Okay, the game OST is not a Twitter thing, so we're good. We can actually do that. Huzzah! Yeah. So after that, Fear Factory. There's only one thing left to play. Really, you could play the the ending credits, but. This is not what I thought it was. No, that's the game over theme. Although, we can talk about this because oh, it's oh, quite short. Of course it's called of course it's called that. It's called Gangplank Galleon. Right. Well that's What does Gangplank Galleon mean, Daniel? It means it means you're at the end of the game. It means you're on the pirate ship. You gotta walk the plank. Yeah. There you go. It's you know what's weird is <laughs> You have to let this one play a while though. Because this song is so important. It's to like the One Winged game. Angel of Donkey Kong Country. It, 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 <laughs> no, for real though, you say that it totally is. <laughs> this song is so important to the game because it starts out so chill, like it, so upbeat and happy, and then you know you see K. Roll and you start fighting him. But then, okay, what was insane, your first impression of K. Roll? I mean, I, I guess I expected it, him I, being like a big crocodile because of the rest of the criminals. I did not. I um, thought he was totally unintimidating. I mean, no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's not exactly like a super intimidating force. It's but funny. The how, music, though, yeah. is what drives him. Because that, like, this part right now that's playing is like completely 180 yeah. from the beginning of the it's song. It's like a joke at first. Yeah. And, and then it turns into like this amazing theme. Yeah. That, you know, I guess this and Fear Factory are kind of on par with me. Yeah. Because this, when I, when I heard this, too, you know, it's like. It's like, wow, I, I, I didn't see this coming. But honestly, I feel like it's kind of a uh, a sign that this is a really good song is that I can imagine this being played live and really being into it. Well, Fear yeah, Factory's yeah. not quite the same. It's more, I mean, maybe it's just, it's more... I don't more... know if I want to hear Fear Factory live. <laughs> <laughs> we, we love you, Fear Factory. Come on the show. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> That's a good band name. Uh, you, you know that is a real band, right? Fear Factory? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of cool. <laughs> They're they're okay. I've, I've listened to them, but I I've, I've definitely have the music in my ear holes. Oh well, all right. <laughs> no, but yeah, this is an amazing song, no doubt. I yeah, I'm another obsession of mine, definitely for sure. <laughs> okay, you may think I'm a terrible person, but I, as good as this as the ambience are, and just everything in Donkey Kong Country, I feel like it doesn't quite measure up to Chrono Trigger. I mean, maybe it doesn't, because Chrono Trigger's got a lot more depth, right? Right. Because, I mean... I mean, it's a little deeper than, oh, crap, they stole our bananas. R- right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, maybe it's really about, like, the idea of property. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's impressive to me is that this soundtrack tells a story just with the music, right? That's like you, true, Like yeah. you said earlier. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that is something that... A lot of games can't pull off. I mean, Chrono Trigger obviously did, but well, then, sometimes. But then, for the most part, it has the actual story holding its hand. Well, that's what I'm saying is like Chrono Trigger's got the the story and the music hand in hand. Yeah. Whereas Donkey Kong Country has a story that's very basic and super not memorable or whatever. Because <laughs> when I think of Donkey Kong Country, I think of the music. I don't think of the story, right? I think the only time you or see the characters words, even. Or, oh, oh, we almost forgot one. The only time you see words are when things like this happen. And of course, there's an ad, so you know we'll thank oh, our okay. sponsors now. Well, what what song is it? Uh, well, oh, if you had to guess, I I don't know. I'm thinking. Oh my gosh! Oh, a Funky's theme. I have to right? do. I have to do the joke we talked about. Funky's fugue. <laughs> yep. Ready for this? I don't think anybody's ready for this. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's the song. Like, <laughs> yep. That's what, that's what everybody remembers the most. That's the sure. only time you see words in the whole game, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Apart from the beginning. That's, I mean, he, he tells you you can take a flight and go anywhere on the land, which you have to pay for in the second game, but in this one you don't. This reminds me of, like, a rave or something. It, it is it is very funky, for sure. I can see people with those, like, light show things that are ridiculous. 
You know? Yeah, it's a rave. Funky's yeah. Fugue is not a fugue, it's a rave. Uh, no, no, it, it's a rave. <laughs> a rare rave. A ra- oh. A rare rave. <laughs> yeah, rare. Oh, oh. A rare rave. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh yeah, my I god, for, I, I forgot, forgot about, about that, that part. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and then it starts orchestra hits everywhere. This is this this would lead seamlessly into Killer Instinct, but we're still yeah, running out of time. Definitely. Well, anyways, if uh if you people want to, oh, you can always you can always try and buy the soundtrack, but uh good luck paying for it. Good it's luck. Little, it's a little pricey nowadays. All right, Daniel, take us out. <laughs> take us out with the with the sending credits. Yeah, what are we going to talk about next week? Killer Instinct maybe? I don't know. We should do we should do a couple fighting games because fighting games they have good scores from time to time. If we talked about Killer Instinct, would we just talk about the whole series? Yeah. Okay, I'm down for that. Yeah. People, yeah. though, if you have not listened to the Donkey Kong Country soundtracks, do yourself well, a they've favor. They've done the majority of it right no, now. No, oh, you've got to you've you've got to you've got to put on some headphones and listen to this music because it is like unlike anything else. Uh, well, I say that. Oh, this is this is this is a uh, really. D- 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 I don't know. It's something I mean, about that. Yeah. It's, it's, I, it's, do you it's feel the end it? Of the game. <laughs> this is this is the this is the. There's something happening and, in my heart. Yeah, you sit, you sit back and chill. The the, <laughs> the bananas are saved and. Yep. And and, and people and can we... eat again. Oh, that's what it's about. It's about world hunger. Oh sure, yep. sure, yeah, yep. absolutely. Totally. Anyways. <laughs> Let, let's sign off before this gets a little too crazy and out of hand. <laughs> All right. I have been Andrew. And I have been Daniel. And we will see you not next week, but the week after that. With uh, with, with a new game. Yeah. That may or may not be Killer Instinct. May, may or may not be Killer Instinct. Be Killer Instinct. Okay. Bye. One, two, three, bye. Bye.